Welcome to True L Tuesday, and the truth will set you free. Truth is interesting. Now, thank goodness for the ministry of truth that allow us to give you this presentation. Now, we're going to go over a couple of things. Now, tonight, we're going to actually cut this sucker in half. We're going to go over what I think the government will allow us to say, and then we're going to go into the real things. But this is what's actually coming up. And a lot of the stuff you can't talk about. You can't talk about, oh, little things like the testing that they're doing, how it's completely inaccurate and how it's actually run. And next week, we're going to talk about the PCR test and how it's not only used for diagnostic purposes. And we're going to get into details on that. We're going to talk about the food shortages coming up now that we have a new administration coming in, forced medical procedures, and economic collapse, which all those things we can't really talk about. Okay, but the big thing, now this was a really cool um, site, revealingfraud.com. You know, you, you talk about the top leading causes of death. By whose estimate? Okay, we are seeing a massive decline in the health of our population. Now, if we said between one and two million women are going to give an abortion or, or have a miscarriage, okay, every year, does that mean that we're exposed to a lot of toxic chemicals that could be causing us? Maybe, maybe, but you're not going to hear this in the mainstream media. Um, medical treatment, diagnostic procedures, kill around 783,000 people a year. And this is a challenge. But when you look at this, that Stalin had a great quote. Uh, he said, the death of one man is tragic. The death of a million is a statistic. So I want you to look at these numbers because this is huge. It's huge. But no one's shut down the economy for this and no one's even investigating. When we look at abortion, heart disease, cancer, um, uh, sepsis, chronic respiratory infections. I mean, these are hundreds of thousands, millions of people dying. And when you know that in America, we have about 330 million people, about 7,700 people die every day, and that's a normal day. But you are not hearing this. Now, what's interesting, uh, we're going to bring up a couple of books, because if you're not a student of history, if you're not learning anything from history, you're doomed to repeat it. Okay, has, has anyone ever heard that? God, I wish I remember who quoted it. Um, well, I'm reading this book called The Third Reich in Power. And it's amazing because what they did is they took over the media to control the narrative. Yes, I know that's exactly what's happening today. <laughs> Hence, we're kind of like sneaking into this type of media here with YouTube and Facebook and a couple of the others. But there, there's a great ministry of truth that's censoring a lot of this. So we have to find a different avenue. And that's, that's what this one is. The Dr. B VIP site, I think maybe up now. I know we're, we're having a, if anyone's ever done anything computer related, it's always gone smooth and there's never glitches. Okay, good. Thank you. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Okay. So this one is where we can disseminate the information because you have to be part of the resistance. It has, has no matter what your view of the current, um, response to the current virus, okay, or the current economic response, or, or all the other things, like the Great Reset, things like that, that we can't really talk about on this. Whatever your ideas on that, we have to disseminate factual information. It's like this, this article here on, on the PCR test. Wouldn't it be cool if you were to disseminate this and say, look, what a, if you knew what a cycle threshold was and you knew that beyond 25 cycle thresholds that you can't really identify a viable um, uh, particle and that if you go beyond 35, you're just guessing at everything and that America stops the cycle threshold at 40, okay, which means it's virtually worthless and it's not even for diagnostic properties, it's for uh, research. But then you wouldn't have case demic. You wouldn't have a way to panic the people. So this is where we can give out our handouts and give out our PowerPoints in PDF format. That means you can cut, paste, and copy and go to these sites and disseminate it out. This is the underground. 
part of the Resistance Extreme Health Academy again also. This one's, I mean, this is $2 a month, $2.97 a month. This is $19 a month, but this has got forums in there. So this is what, what we're choosing to do. Because right now, if you're looking at the general media, this is the health of the American population. Because what is the health of America? Well, 60% of, of the adults have a chronic illness or disease, one of these diseases, heart disease, cancer, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, stroke, cancer. Most of these are stress-related diseases. Okay, we know that millennials, the study finds the generation has unprecedented rates of diabetes, depression, and digestive disorders. These are everyone 27 years old and under. And under. I know what you're saying. That's fine, but I didn't hear it on the mainstream media, so it must not be happening. No, we've got to change this, okay? Now, this is pertinent, and this is um, published online, 2014. And this is Americans. 24% had one chronic condition, 13% had more than two, and 11.7% had three chronic conditions. Now, why would that be pertinent? Well, because the Center for Disease Control was actually censored by the Ministry of Truth because they put this up. See, there's a difference between dying from something and dying with something, okay? And that's a big difference. Now, the average Joe that's out there munching on the chicken sandwich, okay, um, watching CNN, doesn't identify the difference. But if you know somebody that's dying from this, and that's what the CDC did, they found out that 94% of all of the death certificates that they're attributing to COVID did not die from COVID. It died from an average of 2.6 conditions that are, are comorbid conditions. So they had heart disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary, one of those number of things that the CDC affects 60% of it. So you might think, well, maybe it's not the virus. Maybe it has to do with health. You know, maybe it's not a virus that's affected everybody. They got to run away. Maybe instead of being antivirus, we should be pro-health. Wow. That sounds like Mother Teresa stuff, baby. Okay, and that's what we're going to do. Now, this is a statistic, again, off of the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, and it shows the list of age. I know it's really small, but on, on the site, I'm going to actually be able to give you this, and you can blow it up to read the friggin' thing. And you can get the link and tape, paste it and cut and see what it actually is. But this is telling. Now, what it has, the first row, is all the deaths under one year old. And this is every week, children under a year that are dying. And you're looking at one week, 384, the next week, 427, the next week, 368. Now, these are all children under a year. And you might be thinking, well, what's killing them? Okay, wouldn't, wouldn't that be a question? Because when you get to over a year, one to four years and five to 14 years old, those death rates are dropped by about 75, 80%. So what's so damaging in that first year? It's stuff I can't talk about on this section. We know that autism is going through the roof. Right now, um, one in 28, this was a while ago. Um, they said it was one in four, 45, but it's exponentially increasing. Now, um, <laughs> I used to be concerned about autistic economics because the, you gotta figure 94% of these kids that are damaged and we're looking at a one and two ratio by 2030. It was gonna be a tr trillion dollars a year by 2025. And I used to think that might be damaging to the economy. How wrong could I be? Because all you gotta do is just print more money. I didn't know you could do that. Now, we're gonna go in next week on why that the governments of the world are causing inflation. Okay, it's to actually devaluate the debts, but we're gonna go into that because that's a censorable topic. We know infant mortality, a lot of babies are dying in our country, and I would think this would be newsworthy, if you, even if you don't like kids. It'd be nice to see what's going on with them. Um, we know our system and the health of America, it's an extremely stressed state. 
okay, we have physical, chemical, and emotional stressors. And these are people that aren't just watching CNN every night. The, the corona death suicides, okay, the deaths of despair, minimum estimation will be 1 million next year. Some say 800,000, some say over a million. So, you know, it's really depending on the estimate. This is a really good article. Each 1% increase in unemployment in the U.S., 330 million will lead to about 70,000 additional suicides. If it goes up 12%, we have 831,000 suicides. That's a lot of people. Deaths of despair. And we're going into, I mean, Thanksgiving is going to be in a couple of days. And this is going to be recorded now and be put up in about a week. So it'll be put on after Thanksgiving. But, but think of this. There, there, a few months ago, a few months ago, and this is going to sound crazy, but they closed the beaches in L.A. because of a virus. And then they opened them for active activity, but you could lay a towel down and sunbathe. In Huntington Beach, you could walk on the bike path, but you couldn't walk on the grass because of a virus. I, I know weed's legal in California, okay, but how much is Newsom smoking? Okay, now he's going to be shutting down the outside restaurants and the inside? How can you do that? These guys aren't going to be coming back. Now, this is getting dangerous here because I'm showing what your death rates are from regular life and what your death rates are estimated from a virus that doesn't really have an accurate test for. Okay, and you'll see it's just about 99 um, point something percent in every age category that you're really at greater risk of life than any than viral. But but let's get away from that so that we can beat the sensors. So we're going to talk about cancer. Okay, now it's interesting cancer because uh, we're looking at the health of America. Okay, since cancer is one of the leading causes of death, but it's also one of the biggest money makers. In 1900, 100 years ago, one in 20. Now it's one in two. That's 50% of the population. That means look to the left, look to the right. One of you guys is going to get it. Except in our office, because we work on strengthening the immune system. So think of that. That's 600,000 deaths a year. That's a, uh, 1,600 deaths every day. And you don't hear this on the news. That's 11,000 people dying every week. And you don't hear it on the news. Why? Are we looking at environmental causes? I'm going to show you some of the environmental causes. We know it's a big bunny. We know billions and billions of dollars. The chemotherapy cost. Now, if you have great health insurance, you still, it doesn't cover this. Okay, the leading cause of bankruptcy is medical expenditures. And these are people with insurance. Uh, I mean, and, and I like this. Researchers estimate that if you found a cure for cancer, a cure for cancer, $50 trillion, the problem is they haven't found the cause of cancer because no one's looking at the environment. No one's looking, they, it must be genetic because it can't be the environment because otherwise we'd have to look at the different companies. Okay, we'd have to look at the toxic effects. We'd have to look at the toxic products that we're putting on. We'd have to look at the endocrine disruptors and the entire chemical industry. And then we'd have to call the chemistry board Wait, no, that used to be the Food and Drug Administration. Did you know that? Yeah, they were originally called the Chemistry Board because they, they were a liaison from the chemistry companies to explain in their products to the public so that you would be assured they'd be safe. And DDT is good for me. Yep. Now, this is, I mean, you can call it a criminal organization, but they spend, you know, they take in a bunch of money. And over the last four decades, uh, breast cancer rates have increased 90%. So let's look at something different, because that's the health of America. What if we found a cure for cancer? What if we found the causes of cancer? What if we talked about healthy and immune system? And I know this is cutting the edge because the Ministry of Truth doesn't want this information out. But let's look at the journal, National Science, Biology, and Medicine. Immunity over inability. Spontaneous regressions of cancer. How did that do it? Now, we have people with diapers on their face running around afraid of everybody, okay, and staying away. You've got to be afraid because there's something around everybody. But we're looking at cancer, and they're saying spontaneous healings of cancer. 
Spontaneous healing of cancer is a phenomenon that's been observed for hundreds and thousands of years after having been the subject of many controversies, is now accepted as an indisputable fact. So if cancer, the one thing that a lot of people are afraid of, you know, not, not the diaper wearers, but you know, I mean, we're talking the majority of people that are looking at other aspects of life, okay, knowing that one in two of us are going to get it, okay, it's interesting. Oh, this is interesting. Cancer therapies have been standardized and approved since Coley's days. This goes back um, in the uh, mid-1900s. But surprisingly, modern cancer patients do not fare better than their patients treated 50 years or more ago, as concluded by researchers in 1999. So advances of diagnosing, but not advances of treating. Because, and this is a wild thought, imagine if cancer was an intelligent adaptation by your body based on toxicity or deficiency. That means that if those theories were true, then it would be foolish to cut, burn, poison a person that is adapting to a toxic and deficient situation. That means the therapies would not be effective. But let's, let's you know, look at other causes. This word spontaneous implies without any apparent cause and regression as defined by a decrease in size of the tumor or extent of cancer in the body, according to the National Cancer Institute. Spontaneous regression occurs in most types of cancer and was recorded in the medical literature as early as 1742. Wow. So, I mean, what if we could generate that? And I know we'd be looking at like an immune system, you know, that mystical thing. We might even talk about like vitamin therapy or look at causative cancers like physical, chemical, or emotional stress. The partial or complete disappearance of a malignant tumor in the absence of treatment or in the presence of therapy considered inadequate to exert a significant influence on disease. And this was composed by Dr. Tilden and Warren Cole in the 1960s. Spontaneous regression of cancer is not a rare occurrence, has thought to be. In an average month, 2002, medical journals published more than four articles on the subject in an average month. So this is something that's exciting. But it's not in, not only not in mainstream media, it's not in any doctor's office. Because how, how would you like to go into an office and say, yeah, you have high blood pressure. That is a stress response. We have to look at the physical, chemical, and emotional cause. We're not going to just give you a diuretic, a beta blocker, or an ACE inhibitor, which we know increase your risk of stroke. Oh my gosh. You're, you're not sleeping well. You have inflammatory bowel disease. We're not going to give you drugs to suppress the inflammation. We're going to find out the physical, chemical, and emotional cause. And remember, inflammatory bowel disorder, cancer, and high blood pressure are all idiopathic in origin. Although most doctors are saying, well, cancer must be genetic. Except there's a difference between genetic and genetic expression. So if these diseases are actually adaptations to stress, it's foolishness. Foolishness to treat something that you don't know what the cause is. I, duh. Here's a patient with prostate cancer. Now they come in to our office. Why? Because we're looking at the physical, chemical, and emotional stress. This is a thinking guy. And he's saying, wow, I developed this from some problem. There, should, there could be physical, chemical, and emotional stress. And what you're looking at is the side view of a low back on that picture on the right. And you're seeing a huge bone spur coming up. Now it takes three to five years to see a bone change on x-ray. You're looking at a bone spur that's been there for 20 years. So 20 years we're looking at pelvic dysfunction because this disc, these two discs are misaligned, compressing the nerves, causing the pelvic floor to not function correctly. Physical, chemical, and emotional stress. You're looking at the side view of his neck with a reverse curve. That was a whiplash trauma based on the amount of damage. Again, another 20 year old plus injury. So this guy's been in a stress state for 20 years, living in America with massive amounts of endocrine disruptors. Most pesticides are estrogen based. We're looking at, at glyphosates, which destroy the normal gut flora. I mean, all of these toxins. And then he develops that abnormal cell growth in the prostate. So should you just remove it or fix the physical, chemical, and emotional stressors. I encourage you, if you're interested in prostate cancer, look at Larry Clapp, C-L-A-P-P, -P, Prostate Health in 90 Days. When we, talk, we, we mention his book, when we talk about prostate health, fantastic. When we look at the politics of cancer, 
the politics of cancer. How can you politicize a disease? <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, that's another bad response. Okay, there is not one, but many cures for cancer. They're all being systematically suppressed by the American Cancer Society, the National Cancer Institute, and the major oncology centers. They have too much of an interest in the status quo. We're talking hundreds of billions of dollars. That's a good incentive. We are not dealing with a scientific problem. We're dealing with a political issue. Well, wait a second. Let's look at this. Pancreatic cancer. Okay. And they're saying it's almost a five-year survival rate of only 3%. Medium is less than six months. You get this diagnosis according to this journal, you die. Now, the uh, FDA approved this uh, gemcitabine plus erlotibine for advanced pancreatic cancer. And it's interesting. Yeah. It had less than a 10% of effectiveness. That means 90% of the time it didn't work. Okay. And this was approved. Why? Because of a desperate, desperate need. Now, again, I'm looking at health has, has the body's immune system or adaptation to physical, chemical, and emotional stress. Why would you give a chemical that is less effective than a placebo? Dietary fatty acids. Now, there's journal articles out there that say, hey, wait a second. There is a causative factor, a contributing factor okay, to pancreatic cancer. And this one is, is devastating. It turns out in a large, uh, wide, wide range of intakes of dietary fat of animal associated with an increase in pancreatic risk. That means you eat more toxic animal substances, you have an increased risk of cancer. Why? Could it be the growth hormones that were given in there? Could it be the, the, the hormones that were given to the cows so they keep perpetual pregnancy? The bovine growth hormones, which we know are indicating in all sorts of different types of cancers, it could be. We know there is a dietary exposure that increases your risk of cancer. All of this stuff we know. But is this by the media? No. And I'm telling you right now, this might get by the censor. This might get by the censor. If not, this entire video will be deleted. Okay, honest to goodness. In a few months, in a few months, this will not be allowed. If I tell people to check their blood pressure and to find the cause of it and look at their medications that they can cause damage, if I mention that, that will be wiped out as well. Okay, because you are losing your rights to make a choice. Animal products are okay and they're good for you, but they have to be a healthy animal. We need animals in order to create good farmland. However, what we're doing, we're raising sick animals for profit. Now, now, a lot of the concentrating animal feeding operations, okay, they produce sick animals, but they're having a, a challenge. You know, if you've heard of the polar vortex, uh, they're wiping out a lot of the food productions, but, but we need to, uh, what the World Economic Forum and our government are trying to do is to um, cause a massive inflammation. And the only way you can affect that is by reducing products and services and printing more money. Yeah, they are doing both. Okay, but this right here, when you produce a huge amount of animals in a toxic, dangerous environment, they create a huge amount of waste. Anybody remember the, the E. coli infections of a tomato? Well, a tomato doesn't have a digestive tract, so it can't be producing, you know, pooping out E. coli. How did that happen? Well, you spray raw sewage in the farmland, okay, and you can get these pathogenic bacteria, okay, that are normal inside the intestinal tract sprayed everywhere. Um, yeah. Now, government subsidies, okay, if you were not were to just buy a pound of meat, it cost around 90 bucks without the subsidies. Now, what are you going to do? What about this? How about look at let food be your medicine and venison be your food? No, I didn't come up with that. That was Hippocrates. <laughs> Very brilliant, though. Okay, look at this. Curcumin. Oh, my God. A plant-based derived a dietary ingredient with potent nuclear factor kappa beta B and tumor, in tumor inhibiting properties against advanced pancreatic cancer. Wow. And I, I can't tell you on this one, I'm just, just show you this article, about other vitamin therapies. That, that, again, you can't talk about. 
Okay, but they are here. Iodine, okay, great study in 1993, 20 to 40 times the amount of iodine to prevent a goiter actually helped with fibrocystic breast disease. In 2004, fibrocystic breast changes in women greater than 60%. Now, what was that drug? Oh, it was less than 10%. Here, iodine reduces that breast cancer or fibrocystic breast disease um, uh, <laughs> in three to four months of doing iodine supplements. Now, you might be thinking, well, wait a second. Iodine, isn't that a halide? Why would we have so many breast cancers? Could the diet be deficient in iodine and, and have an overabundance in toxic things that are similar, like fluoride, bromine, fluorine? Yeah, it could be. So wouldn't this be on the shelf of every real doctor that really cares about your health? I would think so too. But again, we can't talk about that here. Oh, this, this guy. You got to see David, uh, Dr. Uh, Brownstein's work. I mean, just Bitching. I mean, I, like, I even like the way the guy writes, uh, but really, really good information. <laughs> I, I, th this is an old slide from a talk I gave uh, a couple of years ago, but my gosh, this is brilliant. Okay, Veer Schneiber, okay, PhD, brilliant gal. She wrote a book about vaccinations. A hundred years of orthodox research shows that vaccines represent a medical assault on the immune system. Listen to this quote. The fact is that many countries that call themselves free succumb to medical dictatorship. People are sicker and less healthy. A country which mandates vaccination is not a free country. It is a country of zombies who do what they're told by vested interests who intimidate them and use them to make money. I know, I'm telling you, you guys got to read that book, The Third Reich in Power. It's, it's like scary. 25,000 babies, that's a lot more than that now. Uh, American babies succumb to cot deaths each year. Vaccination is the single bi biggest contributor to cot deaths. When Japan moved to vaccination to the age of two years, the cot deaths instantly disappeared. Um, when we look at this, so you might say, well, yes, Canada is closing their borders. Yes, New York has their roads barricaded by military. Uh, yeah, you can't get on a plane and fly anywhere until you have a test that is completely inaccurate. Okay, and you might be quarantined for everyone, and everything will go back to normal as soon as you get the forced vaccination. Does anybody believe that? You can see all the people in front of CNN saying, yes, I believe. As soon as we get that mythical vaccine that has you know, not really been tested and rushed to market and has no liability, we're going to be okay. We can get back to normal. That means that these people that are wearing the mask and the gloves will say, yeah, baby, I got the shot. I'm impervious. <laughs> um, and a lot of people are okay that it gets forced on people, except in Colombia. And, and look at this judge's um, statement. Uh, he felt the precedent setting a decision went beyond HPV, human papilloma vaccine, and you're going to see some of the risk of that in the second part, affirmed that the ethical principle of informed consent to medical risk taking. Um, the state cannot make decisions regarding bodily integrity of its citizens because to do so would violate human dignity. Wow. I mean, we used to have a Bill of Rights that allowed for freedom of expression, freedom of the press, and freedom of religion. Okay, those are no longer current because the current panic and the government interventions have wiped out those. Okay, if, if you're curious, just try and go to the church or synagogue in any other state other than South Dakota, Florida. I mean, I think there's some states that are starting to open up, but not in the the empire of California. We are now going to talk about vaccinations um, and the toxic effects and old um, things. If anyone remembers the, the swine flu of 1976, we're going to bring up some of that data and some things that show that it may take years to find the autoimmune conditions 
that are associated with vaccines and everything else. So this is something that cannot be here. And I'm, I'm sorry that, that we can't put it on there, okay? But just know that we have to make an effort. We have to make an effort, okay? To get this information out there. That's the only reason we're doing the Dr. B VIP site because we've got to get that information out there. You are part of the resistance. And there are so many people that are slow to wake up. Um, we don't have that option now. We have to wake up now. So the line is drawn here. And the, you know those that are watching this live, God bless you. I love you. We got to get the information out. Um, join some group if you can't join ours. Okay, but I'm going to do this for the rest of the talks for, you know, until they arrest me. Okay. And where it's going to be what I think might get by the censors and what is censored. Okay. God bless you. Let's switch it.